there's no rule that says we have to use job order costing or we have to use process costing. But remember, in managerial accounting, we're answering the management's question, how are we doing? And if we make a lot of the same thing, like if we make a lot of soft drinks or if we make a lot of electricity or if we make a bowling balls that are exactly the same, if we're making a steady stream of stuff that looks exactly or pretty much exactly the same, using process costing may be the way that we're of most help to management. So just like job order costing, we're going to take materials, labor, and overhead, move it into work in process, and eventually move it into finished goods and cost of goods sold. What's different about process costing is every month we're going to keep track of our costs in each process. So we can tell management that this month uh, costs were down in process number one, or this month costs were up in process number one, and management can ask, was that because our raw materials was up, because our labor was up, or overhead was up, instead of waiting until the very end when the product is completely done. So when we make this product, our output from work in process number one will be the beginning direct materials for process number two. We may add some more materials, we may add some more labor and overhead when we get there, but the output of process number one is the input for process number two. The facts are that the direct materials are added at the beginning of process number one. Conversion costs are added evenly throughout the process. Let's presume there's no beginning working process in, in number one. And let's say they assign us 10,000 units. We finish 8,000 of them up. We move those on to work in process number two. We have ending inventory of 2,000 units, and that stuff is 50% complete as far as conversion costs go. So as I often say, if we finished everything every month, the chapter on process costing would be one page. So for example, if all 10,000 units got finished, we could tell management that it costs us $4.70 per unit. $47,000 divided by 10,000 units is $4.70 per unit. But we don't finish everything every month. So we have to figure out exactly how much work we do, and we look at it from two points of view point of view of direct materials and the point of view of conversion costs. And then once we figure out how much work we did, we can figure out how many dollars go from work in process number one to work in process number two. Anybody can figure out that 8,000 units went, but someone who has taken an accounting class has to be employed to tell us how many dollars went with those units and how many dollars stayed with these 2,000 units that we're still working on. Okay, let's figure out how much work we did. Those 8,000 units that went from work in process number one to work in process number two, they were 100% complete. So as far as direct materials go, we did 8,000 units worth of work on those guys. Those 2,000 units that are left in work in process, since direct materials are added at the beginning of the process, there ain't no more materials to add. So those 2,000 units are 100% complete as far as materials go. So when we look at the amount of work we did for the point of view of direct materials, we did 10,000 equivalent units worth of work. Now from the point of view of conversion costs, those 8,000 units that went out, they had to be 100% complete. So that's 8,000 equivalent units worth of work. And those 2,000 units that are left in work in process, in process number one were 50% complete. 2,000 units that are 50% complete are the same as 1,000 complete units. So from the point of view of conversion costs, we did 9,000 equivalent units worth of work. 8,000 that moved, 8,000 units that moved on, and those 2,000 units that are 50% complete are the same as 1,000 complete units. So that gives us 9,000 equivalent units worth of work. So what's our cost per unit? $20,000 divided by 10,000 equivalent units means that as far as materials go, our cost was $2 per unit. We spent 27,000 on conversion costs to do 9,000 equivalent units worth of work. $27,000 divided by 9,000 equivalent units is $3. So our total cost to make a unit is $2 for materials and $3 for conversion costs during this month. That's a total of $5. Since it costs us $5 a unit in uh, process number one, and we moved 8,000 units 
on to process number two, we're going to take $40,000 out of work in process number one and move it to work in process number two. $47,000 debit balance minus $40,000 credit means that we have a $7,000 debit balance. What does that represent? We have 2,000 physical units left. Those 2,000 units are 100% complete as far as materials go. So that's 2,000 times $2 is 4,000. Those 2,000 units are 50% complete as far as conversion costs. So that's 1,000 equivalent units. 1,000 equivalent units times $3 is 3,000. So 4,000 plus 3,000 explains that $7,000 that's left in ending work and process in process number one. And that's all there is to the basics of process costing.